Okay. So we are live. This is Senate Judiciary, Monday, June 22nd, 2020. Um, <clears throat> we're taking up an amendment to the bill that is just been posted to the website. It is draft 2.3. It's 1.3. I don't have that on the website yet. So. Yep, I'm posting it right now. Is it right. what you emailed to us, Bryn? No, no. minor change. Um, we can oh. start to, um, all right, well, why don't we start over? Not the committee, but the looking for the I've still got 1.2 on my judiciary website and just to be clear it's 1.3 the only difference is a corrected um, cross-reference okay well why don't we start on a and then assume that we'll get um, Okay. Out on the intent language and assume that we will get to um, see by the time we get to see the new, uh, or by the time we get to the second amendment, we will be at the. Sure thing. So okay. for the record, Bryn Hare from Legislative Council, and I'd be happy to just talk about draft 1.2. I could just point out where draft 1.3 has been corrected. Um, okay. Otherwise they're identical. So it's really no problem to look at draft 1.2. Okay. So this is an instance of amendment um, that would add a new section A1 to the beginning of S219 to add some language about legislative intent. Um, there are two subsections to this uh, section A1. And the first um, sort of light, lays out that the intent of the General Assembly is that uh, this S219 is a continuation of the work that the General Assembly has done over the last several years um, on legislation that addresses systemic racism and the disproportionate use of force by law enforcement. Um, and then it lists several acts, which I can go through. Um, 2017 Act 54, that was the RDAP bill, um, Racial Disparities Advisory Panel. 2018 Act 9, that was the act that created the Executive Director of Racial Equity. <clears throat> Uh, 2013 number act 180 that was the um, act that was about the statewide policy on the use of um, force or the training requirements for electronic control devices and the use of those devices by law enforcement 2016 act number 163 that was the model state policy for the use of body cameras by law enforcement and 2017 act number 56 that was, that's the professional regulation of law enforcement bill um, that also references Act, um, or sorry, S338, the Justice Reinvestment Bill, which doesn't yet have an act number because it's not quite done winding its way through the process. And it um, then at the bottom of the page there on page one, lines 20 to 21, um, there's language about how there's legislative committees that continue to work on these issues. So this act is really represents um, uh, just a part of the legislature's ongoing effort to deal with these issues. Subdivision, subsection B on page two um, sets out the intent of the legislature to that law enforcement use community policing strategies um, and practice a guardian mindset towards the citizens that law enforcement serve and establish a culture of transparency and accountability that will both promote public safety and foster the public trust. And then the last sentence there is to this end, it's the intent of the General Assembly that law enforcement use de-escalation strategies first and foremost before using force in every interaction with the community. Okay. So, Any questions um, or changes or comments about this good work? Yes. Very clear. So just, Alice. I just wonder if we could um, go to line three, in section A, and stop the sentence at um, 
put a period after use of force period rather than saying by law enforcement in Vermont. I don't, I don't know that we really have- I'm to, sorry, where are you? I'm on line three. In Actually, it's line eight. It is? In, in the draft I'm looking at. So the sentence reads, it's the first sentence in A. Oh, law enforcement agent, it's on line four. In the, in, okay. in the General Assembly, law enforcement agencies in Vermont, you want to. I want to drop that. I just wanted to end with disproportionate use of force. I'm, re I'm sorry, the new, Alice. I'm... The new draft is on the committee page. Yeah. I don't know if that makes a difference. I printed this one a few minutes ago. So, do, what's your first sentence, Dick? On line four, page two, it's the intent of the General Assembly that law enforcement agencies in Vermont use community policing strategies to develop collaborative partnerships between law enforcement and communities, adopt policies and practices that reflect the guardian mindset towards the citizens they serve, and establish a culture of transparency and accountability to promote public safety and foster public input. Dick, I think Dick. Alice is on... Uh... Section A one A, so the 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 very start of it. Right, on line eight, I believe is where Alice is. I don't. The version I have doesn't have any line numbers. All right. right. So you want the the act is a continuation of General Assembly's work over the past several years to create meaningful reform to address systematic racism and disproportionate use of force by law enforcement, and you want to strike in Vermont. I want to, I want to, and disproportionate use of force, period. Rather I than- want, I can understand taking out Vermont, but I don't understand taking out law enforcement. All right, by law enforcement. Okay, then take out just in Vermont. Alice, can I ask what your rationale is? I mean, I think this sends a very bad message that we have a lot of disproportionate use of force going on here. And while we have some, I think this sends a message to the entire country that we have a lot, which, which we don't. We have some, that's for sure. Well, I, I can see that, but I guess the other way to look at it would be it's owning what we do have. Um, you know, it's saying in Vermont, we, we do have this problem. We, I, th I think it would take care of it. I mean, I think we don't have an excessive problem in that area. I, and I would be fine with taking out in, in Vermont because, you know, that's understood that we're legislating for Vermont. Right. I think it's important to keep law enforcement. That's fine. Keeping law yeah. enforcement is fine. All right. I think there's general agreement to take out in Vermont. Okay. I'll take, I'll strike that. Anything else on that, on the intent section? Okay, shall I move on to the second instance of amendment? Yeah. Um, and because Matt's not here and not able to a change. I'm, I'm going to read from his email to us. I think he's on his way. All right. Well, I, I think what I'll start with is I know that I didn't express myself well on this today because I didn't really see it coming and had to work from memory. But in taking a closer look at this, which is the, the, the section that we're proposing to amend, this, it doesn't, at this, doesn't implicating the entire justifiable homestead statute as a defense effectively got the use of force provision that you're referring to in S-219. The list, the first paragraphs, one and two, deal with lay people, not law enforcement. And if you read this together with the new language in use of force, doesn't three still let the officer off the hook if he or she is suppressing opposition in a just and necessary discharge of his or her duty? If you needed to get the bill out of there today, so it wasn't going to argue with Bruce, Philip, I think there's an issue here. Um, 
just something to think about. See highlighted portion. And the highlighted portion is in the case of a civil officer or a military officer or a private soldier when lawfully called out to suppress a riot or rebellion or to suppress an invasion or to assist in serving legal process in suppressing opposition against him or her and the just and necessary di discharge of his or her duty. And that would be what that three in justifiable homicide is what would be struck from use in this particular case, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bryn, when a um, person under the sections regarding um, the restraints, improper restraints. And so it would not be a defense under three in an improper restraint. Is that correct? Is that as narrow as it would be? That is correct. So if a, or is it if broader? A, so no, if, if, if a police officer uses an improper restraint, they would be able to use three. Right, they would not be able to raise as a defense subdivision three um, of the justifiable homicide statute. And again, it would only be if the law enforcement officer used a prohibited restraint that caused serious bodily injury or death, what this language would do is it would exclude um, from the, it would ex that this defense under 23053 would not be available to a person being prosecuted under this new statute. But the others, one and two, would still be available. That, that's correct. So justifiable homicide, that those defenses that are laid out in one and two, and this it, one is essentially self-defense, um, or defense of the person's relation would still be available. And the defense of, I committed this act in the suppression of, um, to suppress this person from committing a serious violent crime, that would also remain a defense for a person being prosecuted under the new So Bryn, if we adopt this amendment, we wouldn't we have to change the reference in 219 that we voted out because now it it says that there's no change to the availability of the defense in this statute so the amendment draft 1.3 should replace that language that says it strikes that subdivision oh. okay so good nothing in this section should be construed to limit or restrict the availability of that defense Okay, good. Right. So the, just so everybody everybody understands, you may be um, on the committee and those in the who may be listening in. If we adopt this, a police officer who would use an improper restraint could use as a defense. He was suppressing a person attempting to commit murder, sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault, burglary or robbery with force or violence. Yes, that's correct. So basically the most serious crimes. Well, yes, but we're missing a very major component of police responsibilities. But Joe, it's when, just to remind ourselves, it's when a police officer uses an improper restraint Prohibited. that results in death or serious bodily injury to the person who was being restrained. So it's not if there's a riot. And just to remind us, it's a prohibited restraint and it's illegal. Right. So they're, they're, they're breaking the law and injuring somebody. They still have these first two defenses. Right. Those first two defenses do not cover a situation. If I am on the ground being kicked by a riotous mob and a police officer injects him or herself into that scene and uses whatever reasonable means are necessary, including a prohibited act in order to stop me from being uh, further kicked. Unless the demonstration is there that I am either being subjected to murder or sexual assault, 
or burglary or robbery. Those first two provisions are very specific on how you can use a defense in that case. And what's missing is the ability of the officer to bring calm to a situation that doesn't fit neatly into that definition. But Joe, if you think about the tools that are available legally to an officer to stop a riot, I mean, we've all seen television images from the last month and a half. There's a whole panoply of gear that is non-lethal that is called out in the event of a riot. What we're saying is you, if you see someone kicking someone, it is not proportional and it is illegal to go in and choke that person out and, and risk killing them. So, you know, what, what this prohibition, we, we prohibited these kind of restraints and we're just making sure that C doesn't uh, inadvertently open the door to using them in any, I mean, if you read C, it's about as broad as it could be. You could be serving a, a subpoena and, and, you know, fall Philip, under this. Philip, you and I agree, C is terribly overbroad. Yep. But let's take the case of a riot. There's a reason that word appears in C. It does not appear in, it's actually one or two under the statute. Justifiable homicide has three numerically designated paragraphs. It's the third paragraph that you and I agree is overbroad and needs to be worked on. But the word riot appears there. It does not appear in the first two sections. So in my mind, as I'm reading that, if an officer steps into a riotous situation, they may need to use whatever force is necessary at that point. But it now, as society is changing its attitudes, it falls on the officer to demonstrate why it is they did what they did at that point. And I'm trying to reach the place where we don't strip police altogether of things that may need to happen that we all actually would agree needed to happen at that moment in time. But Joe, the committee, the committee agreed five to zero to prohibit these restraints. Now what you're arguing is that if, if we can construe something as a riot, they should be allowed to go in and choke whoever they want. And I, I'm, I, I'm just- I'm not, Philip, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there is a very fine line between depriving an officer of a defense that currently exists because we're angry about the way that it has been applied. No, I, th that's untrue. Nobody's well, angry about the way it's been applied. We're, we're looking at it now in the light of uh, what's going on around the nation, which is peaceful protests with occasionally um, violence here or there. What this provision does is it doesn't even limit it to riot. It says civil process, civil procedure. Uh, Philip, I agree with you completely that that is yeah. overbroad. It needs to be removed in this situation. But, but, what, but, but we haven't got to the point yet where we're talking about the two things now that an officer would have available as a defense. And those two things are very specific and limited. It says they can protect their own life or the life of a husband, wife, parent, child, brother, sister, master, mistress, servant, guardian, or ward. But the officer can't protect me in that situation. But under the other one, but under the other one, it says in the suppression of a person attempting to commit murder. Okay, I'm not being murdered if I'm being or, kicked and I'm on the ground. Or sexual well, assault. I'm not being sexually assaulted. You could. Or burglary or robbery. And I'm not subjected to either of those. Well, so what we're saying is the officer can't even raise as a defense. Benning is being assaulted. I can't use the defense that I used some improper restraint to try to stop that from happening. Yeah. First of all, remember that under this is limited to the improper restraint. Second of all, 
It is only when serious bodily injury and death occurs as a result of that improper restraint that the police officer would be charged, right? So the mere fact of using it may result in disciplinary issues, but it wouldn't rise to the level of the 20 year felony. If, if the, um, <clears throat> and so I, I, while I understand your example, I was fairly comfortable with Matt's suggestion because I think, I mean, if we were using it broadly, um, that any use of force, et cetera, still, as, as Philip said, they, they've still got a number of different avenues. It's when they use an improper restraint. A prohibited restraint, an illegal Excuse restraint. Excuse me, pro right. Bl lim yes, thank you for, I'm still using the wrong term. I've got to get my- Yeah, I'm just, I, I keep saying that because all of the other things, guns, pepper spray, uh, different tasers tools that we've tasers. heard about, tasers, pepper balls, all of those things are legal and can be used under various circumstances. We're saying this one thing is illegal, but you still, if you cause bodily injury or serious harm because you're afraid of, uh, of your own life, um, which was your concern, Joe, as we've discussed it, um, now you're broadening it to if a policeman sees somebody being kicked, they need to be able to cause serious bodily injury by choking someone. And I, I, I think at that point, we've gone all the way back to where we started, which is police having the right to choke people when they feel it's necessary. I don't want to reach that I, level. I'm trying to get to a middle ground that, that well, enables I, an argument to be made. I think. I don't what, think there's... What the amendment now says, and Senator Sears has said, we'll look at C and take testimony later when we have time. <laughs> what it does now is it prohibits C from being a rationale for using the prohibited restraint. But, you know, I think you and I agree C needs more work. Um, I would be for striking it all together. Sounds like you would want some modification of it. Well, can I? You know, Joe, if you use the example of Kent State, National Guard, they were not police officers. They were the National Guard at Kent State, which was 50 years ago, which is indelibly marked in all of our minds who are older than 50, I guess. Maybe those of us who are 60 and can remember. I suppose they could have said they were out to suppress a riot or rebellion and killed four kids. Um, and under this justifiable homicide, um, they wouldn't have been culpable at all. And I, I, so I think in the, in the narrow sense that we're using this, and that's why C needs to really be changed under Vermont law and needs to be addressed. And I've committed to taking it up Thursday and Friday. If, if, and I'm not sure we'll get through it all in, in the limited amount of time we have between now and the end of the, and of adjournment of the complete session. But I think that, that for the purposes of the narrow purposes of this bill, prohibited restraints, that portion of this bill, um, that I'm, comfortable that one and two provide that and I'm, and also I want to point out that in the use of force bill we talk about proportionality the use of force being proportional those crimes in two um, rise to a level that a DUI or a in the Georgia case or a $20 counterfeit bill in the Minneapolis case would not rise to were improper um, use of force or restraint in the Minneapolis case. So I'm just want to, that's why I'm willing to support this. Um, but, you know, it's up to the whole committee. And if you'd rather not have your name, we can separate these two amendments out. So there's different names on the two amendments. I... The overall concept of proportionality, I think, is very important here. 
I mean, they use the analogy of Kent State. In hindsight, every one of us believes they were way out of line in what they were doing. How do you correct that behavior? When a, a cop walks up to a group of people on the street who are having a verbal argument and pushes one of them to the ground, to me, that's way out of line, totally improportional to what was actually going on. We all agree to that part of it. There are situations though, when we charge officers with keeping the peace, that there has to be some way for them to be able to present an argument that what they did was proportional to the circumstances. And at the end of the day, it is up to a jury to decide whether that is true or it is not true. And I'm nervous that we are, um, we're approaching a point where our desire to correct wrong behavior is stretching out a little too far for me to be comfortable. Now this particular amendment, um, I'm uncomfortable just depriving the officer of any way to make an argument unless it falls within the justifiable homicide language that all of us are normally entitled to because in that uniform, they are responsible for doing something you and I are not responsible for. And I'm troubled by extending Peggy, what I, I believe for us is Excuse beyond. me, Joe, I, we've yeah. lost the video. I don't know what's happened. Oh, there we are, we're back. Sorry, Joe. That's okay. We're having technical difficulties. And I just got an email from someone saying the YouTube is not streaming. So I'm reaching out to IT to figure that out as well. Okay. It oh, it's well, recording button. Matt Valerio has joined us and um, I don't know if Matt's heard any of the debate or not but um, would love to have your counsel I've heard the I've heard some of it I don't think I've heard it all um, and uh, what I heard is a little confusing but I had concerns about, as you know, last week, this uh, using justifiable, invoking justifiable homicide as part of the bill as well. But um, I haven't, what I haven't seen or what I'm not sure of is what the amendment is. I, I see. The amendment would, would strike three. So a person who uh, kills a police officer who uses an imp a prohibited restraint. I can't keep using the term improper. Um, a prohibited restraint when it results in, ser in death or serious bodily injury would be able to use um, one and two of justifiable homicide, but not three. And just to clarify, Matt, it doesn't strike three. It just says it's not available in this case. Oh, of the... Um of 2305 it struck it uh says that three isn't available yeah right to an officer yeah right who uses oh, wow. the prohibited restraint wow that's um put yourself in the defense attorney's role for a minute and you're yeah, facing I... a jury with that question in front of you well, I'll just put try to put myself in an officer's position too, or or in uh, see the th the way this is the way justifiable homicide is written is one and two are for lay people, um, which could apply to anybody, but three is specifically designed for officers. Um, You know, the, one of the things this really shows, and I think this, that uh, Senator Sears, I, I know you're committed to doing this, but uh, that justifiable homicide needs to be reworked seriously. <laughs> okay, but I don't know that. Uh, I thought this was your suggestion, Matt. Well, my suggestion was to leave justifiable homicide out of it and allow common okay. law defenses of just, you know, regular self-defense and the like to be, uh, to be part of it. It's kind of, it's, I'm worried about how a court would interpret it if you left 
justifiable homicide in, but then did, uh, but struck three. Do you, Matt, are you saying that we should uh, think about just removing the reference to justifiable homicide altogether from 219? That, yeah. That's what I was trying to get yes. at last week, only because when you create a statute that puts limits on what your defenses might be, those are the defenses that I think that you end up having. I could see a court interpreting it saying, look, you use this. It'd be, it'd be one thing if you use this technique um, you know, to suppress uh, um, one of these crimes that are listed here or in number three, but if you um, did it and it wasn't, didn't fit those specific categories, then now you've got a problem. But as I read uh, Bryn's email about that. Yeah, I, I haven't had the benefit of that, but. Uh, Bryn, so. correct me if I'm wrong, but you thought there was a conflict between uh, 23053 and what we were passing, and it was not clear which would take precedence. That's part of it, too. I mean, it's that the. the can I just ask Bryn? Yes, Bryn? that's correct. I think that um, the two statutes stand um, in pretty stark opposition to one another. So I think um, an attorney could make an argument that um, 2305 would be effectively repealed by the new by the new crime in 1032 if it's silent on whether or not um, that is available for a, for a defense or not. Well, if, if the options are to strike the reference to 2305 altogether or the amendment that makes C unavailable or to go with what Joe wants, I would take the first one, which is getting rid of the, the reference to 2305 altogether. Mind you, what I originally proposed, which was the affirmative defense. See what I what I don't like with about the own, with, Let me just finish. With yeah, the yeah. Um, <clears throat> the onus is on the on the defense to prove that it was uh, justifiable. But I but I feel like then we're offering a, an affirmative defense that doesn't exist now for a crime that we're prohibiting. So we're we're at once creating a new crime and a prohibition and adding a defense that doesn't exist. So it's, it's a one step forward and half a step back. Whereas I think if we take Matt's suggestion and we eliminate the reference altogether, it accomplishes more what we've set out to do. Don't, you know, my understanding is any time that you guys create a, a new crime, um, any of the common law defenses exist. So you can have a defense of self, defense of others, and you have the ability to respond proportionally to whatever the threat is sufficient to repel the threat um, at any given time. And I'm generally giving you self-defense type concepts. Um, and I, I, you know, Bryn, do you disagree with that interpretation? Because that's what we do all the time, right? I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think that my point was because the justifiable homicide statute exists with the specific uh, subsection that deals with law enforcement, that there could be an argument made for implied repeal of that section if it was silent on, on 2305C or three. And I'm obviously not taking a position on that. I was just pointing it out for the committee that. Um... Oh, I understand. So if, if I could just um, summarize a little bit. So if we take out the reference, and this is to Bryn, if we take out the reference to 2305, then uh, if there was a case where an officer used the prohibited restraint, caused serious bodily harm or death, there would still be a determination made by a state's attorney whether to charge and wouldn't the state's attorney 
consider these sorts of issues, whether it was self-defense, et cetera? Yes. And, and then it would move theoretically to a courtroom where again, there would be a consideration of these um, common law defenses or other defenses available in statute. Right, presuming the defense attorney raised raised the defense, yes. Yep. So we're if we're silent on 2305 in 219, it doesn't leave someone who uses the pro prohibited defense without a legal defense. They still have multiple possibilities of either not being charged or being acquitted. Um, it's just that we're not offering them a helpful defense in the form of an affirmative defense. I think that's correct. All the common law defenses would still be available. I think that the justifiable homicide statute would still be available. The, con the question I had was whether or not that specific part of the justifiable homicide uh, statute could be seen as um, a, an implied repeal by the legislature based on the new, the new language. And, and I would be fine if it was seen that way because the 23053 seems to me, I mean, it was put in place in the 80s and it was a different time. But when you look at it now, it's, it's so broad, I can't see how you could ever convict a police officer. Uh, it, it basically immunizes them from almost anything. Um, so, and, and it may not. A court may decide that it was there is no implied repeal, and it may just be considered a defense to the. Yeah, may listen to this conversation. What's that? The court may listen to this conversation in terms of legislative intent. Yep. I still think that um, I I I won't. Um, so the choices are to not have a. Um, second Amendment to this bill, not to the Constitution. Um, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> right, uh, just in case. Um, uh, or to go with the suggestion or um, to remain, to um, go with an affirmative defense. Senator Baruth has been adamant against an affirmative defense. I've been supportive of it because I think it solves all of these problems we've just talked about. But um, I'm flexible here. I have committed to working on 90, 25, the justifiable homicide statute. Um, I think that this has highlighted this particular conversation <laughs> has highlighted the need to revise this and frankly if we're in a riot i don't know what the justification is to uh, kill somebody um, to suppress a riot or uh, so I, I mean i just don't i i, I need to hear um, more about that um, and, and why in 1983, that was an amendment in 1983, and I don't know what that amendment was, Bryn, but the bill, the, the law is from, obviously from much earlier. So the uh, use of the term master and mistress and um, ward certainly is from, and servant is from much earlier than 1983, I'm sure. I think that's right. I haven't been able to get into the building, look at the- um, Yeah to look at the actual books, because I've got to look at the books um, in order I, to- I would guess that, the, that, the, that, that there was an amendment made in 1983 um, for whatever reason, but that the law itself is probably from the, maybe even the 1800s. Yeah, that may be. Senator Baruch. So Dick, I, 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 given what we've said, I would move that we, um, adopt the intent language and rewrite the second amendment so that it strikes the reference in 219 as passed to the 2305 piece altogether. Okay. Does everybody understand Senator Bruce's motion? With that, I think I'm just gonna, 
Okay, we, Senator, we do, what? Uh, Nick, uh, just, yeah. just make sure that I understand it. So what you're saying okay. is that we will um, get rid of any reference at all to any defense. Yes. So, well, yeah, justifiable homicide. The, right, the, only, right, but the mean, only thing that was in the bill was a reference to 2305 justifiable homicide. Senator Baruth's amendment would strike justifiable homicide, that reference from the bill, and then um, add the intent language. It would strike the reference from the bill, but it would leave the statute as it leave stands. Leave the statute as is. Right. Right, and and not and not put in um, Senator Sears. Um, None of my wonderful suggestions are going. Right. <laughs> I thought your suggestion was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. I actually um, think that I, I'm um, throughout this whole conversation have been a little nervous about kind of what that we're maybe even overreacting I, and, and I don't think that there's anything justifiable about somebody doing some of the horrific things that we've seen but I, I um, there I, I'm nervous about some of the things that um, we are um, doing and I guess we'll just see what happens um, there I'm sure will be cases on them and um, we'll see what happens. I am, um, I, I appreciate that. I, I wanna make clear, I, I'm not nervous about what happens as a result of us prohibiting certain restraints. No. Um, they've been outlawed. I, I heard New York City had outlawed them in 1987, yet somebody's accused of using one yesterday. Um, so, you know, that it's, it's something that, um, I just don't see as somebody as as I have said earlier, and both Senator Nicker and I were trained in restraints. I I don't see this as <clears throat> such a why anybody's using them is beyond me, um, and why you know kneeling on somebody's neck is is considered a form of restraint um, that's even necessary. Um, so when it's hard. I, so I'll support the amendment from Senator Baruth or the motion from Senator Baruth, um, even though I still think that, um, so with the understanding that we will look at 2305 justifiable homicide, um, but I don't know, you know, given the short period of time we have left what, where it goes. So, so I wonder, could we hear from Matt on where that leaves uh, a defense for a police officer? What are the, you had said the common law ones would still hold up? Well, I think so. I mean, that's the, that's what typically happens is that, you know, you always have <clears throat> self or others, uh, but your response has to be proportional to whatever the threat is. Um, you can't, you know, like they say, you can't, you know, you can't be a, bring a gun to a fist fight, right? You, if you're involved, if you're confronting a fist fight, you have to respond with some kind of non-deadly force um, in response to that. Um, if you are confronted with deadly force, you have the right to meet it with deadly force. Um, and, uh, um, you know, that is, so that is still available. Um, what, what I don't think you can do is, you know, you have a DUI stop and as you're chasing the guy away, you can't shoot him in the back. Um, that's not, you know, that's again, a, a completely different thing. And as it relates to your restraint issue, um, you know, you've outlawed a particular type of restraint. Um, and, you know, I, I the, the question is, what does it do to that? And I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, you know, what, what circumstances would rise to the level where you would have to use that kind of deadly force. Um, Say so you're fighting I, over a gun. Something like that. I mean, that'd be the, 
that would probably be the only kind of thing. Um, it couldn't be for, I mean, the things we're seeing are not, they aren't people being confronted with guns. They're $20, you know, bad bills and DUIs and that kind of thing. Isn't that the sum and substance of the argument in front of us? Proportionality seems to be the whole conversation. We all know what's way out of line. And it's that gray area in between that people get frustrated about. And I'm not sure I want to leave a record that suggests we are getting rid of 200 years of jurisprudence um, in the attempt to react to what we're seeing on the news these days. How are I we think, getting rid of 200 years of jurisprudence? Well, if, if we leave any piece of this record as suggesting that we are repealing the language in justifiable homicide, that That's would be- That's from 1983, Joe. Uh, well, it, we don't know exactly what the 1983 provisions were at this moment in time. My concern is you have a very long history of common law, which has presented a jury with what is proportional under the circumstances. They have to listen to that and make a decision. And I know there's frustration about some police officers getting away with something they shouldn't have gotten away with. But I don't want to leave the record on voting with this, that we're suggesting we're trying to repeal that ability of an officer to make a defense that is correctly proportional to what happened under the circumstances. No, what Matt is saying is if it is proportional, there is a defense. Well, I agree with him 100%, and I'm hoping to leave that as part of this record going forward. I think, I think if you read S-119 and S-219 together, you would see a record of looking at proportionality in the use of force. And we're prohibiting in S219 a certain use of force that has been proven to be deadly or provide or, or create serious bodily injury. Um, and so we're not, so I, I don't see as our commitment to continue to look at justifiable homicide statutes as being anything other than a serious need to update anything that in this day uses in, in our laws, terms like master, servant, and mistress as being something, you know, that's akin to Vermont in 2020 versus Vermont in 1810. Um, so I, I don't see a, a commitment to look at a law that's long overdue for revision um, as being something that undoes a defense to anyone, whether they be a law enforcement officer or a state senator or a citizen of the state of Vermont. Dick, I think you rightly pointed out that somewhere down the road, a court will be looking back at this record to decide what yep. our intent was. I'm merely saying that if I vote for this amendment and the bill itself, I am doing so with a clear understanding that we are not intending to um, repeal anything at this point in time. Right. And that whatever defenses have been traditionally raised can still be raised. I believe in the right for people to defend themselves. And, and can I, I just... Oh, go ahead, Jeanette. Well, I, I, um, I don't think... I'm not sure what will happen when we look at the that justifiable um, homicide section, but in my mind, I have no intent to repeal it, but to update it. I mean, I, I don't think that that is our intent, right? Is to to repeal that at all, but to no, look at what it means now and how it should be written and interpreted. But on on the anniversary, well, I I'll go. A step further, though, on the end of, on the fiftieth anniversary of Kent State, I think we ought to be darn clear about your ability to uh, shoot people because they are protesting. Yeah, right. yeah, right. I I agree, but I I do think that um, if if courts are looking at our intent and 
I think that we need to make it clear that our intent is not necessarily to repeal, I, but right. to um, re well, to um, look at it in terms of what we need I now. I hope. I have no intention to repeal that. My hope is that none of this ever happens. Yeah. That police officers will not use the prohibited restraints under any circumstances and will not, um, we won't have serious bodily injury and death as a result. So I'm ready to vote. Um, Peggy, could you, the Senator Bruce's amendment, could you please call the roll unless there's further discussion? Let me just ask Bryn, can I just ask Bryn something? So Bryn, sure. with regard to the issue of the officer and a person are in a fight over a gun, if the officer uses one of the prohibited restraints, he still has a defense. Oh, but, I think that's a, that would be a pretty clear self-defense um, case. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So I just want to make sure this is draft 1.3 you're talking about, right? Draft 1.3 okay. as amended when the amendment would be to take out any reference to justifiable homicide in the in S219. It will just be striking subdivision C in section five. Okay. Oh, wait. Adding intent language. Bryn, are you going to do like a new version that would be 1.4 that would have all this stuff or we're voting on 1.3? You'll vote. It'll be 2.1. So, okay. So we're going to vote on 2.1, not 1.3, correct? Correct. Okay. So, let me get this clear. In this version, we're taking out the second amend the second proposal of amendment, right? Yep. Which refers and to and we're re revising the second proposal of amendment to take out the reference to the law on justifiable homicide. Right, but then you don't need this it in there at all. Well, anyway, okay. Well, you need well, to, you get have rid to of take it, it out because it's in the version that's on the floor. The whole second amendment is in the version that's on the floor. I don't know what's on the floor. No. So what, what we voted on Friday had a reference to 2305. Yes. So this updated amendment would strike that reference in 219 as we passed it on Friday. Right. Okay. Everybody clear? Yes. Any further discussion? And um, I understand the technical difficulties, and I hope that the YouTube recording is running. And it is. All that. It is running. Okay. Yep. So this, this is an amendment actually from all of us. Is there anyone who wants their name off the amendment, by the way? I will. On it? On it. Off yeah. of it. It's already on. It. Everybody's <laughs> on. Does anybody want to come off? Does anybody want to take their name off? That's the question. <laughs> All right. Peggy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Senator White. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Benning. Yes. Senator Nika. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. So Senator Baruth will propose will will take care of the amendment as soon as he gets it from Bryn. <laughs> Send it to John Bloomer. It'll be in, tomorrow, in tomorrow's calendar when we report S-119 and S-219. Senator Bruce will report 219. I'm reporting 119. And I don't know who comes first. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's up to I don't know whoever's matters. on second. <laughs> I know they're I knew on you third. Were gonna say that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> they're on third. So... We'll see you all later this afternoon, I guess. So could we do we have a session at three thirty? Yes. Yes. Today. Oh. And okay. it's gonna go forever. Could we uh, get a copy of the amendment that we just did, please? Yes. I'll send it to all of you right now. Thank you, Bryn. Bryn's already written. <laughs> yeah. Bryn's so far ahead of us. Okay. Uh, and we're meeting Matt, tomorrow thank you for your I'm counsel. Sorry. Thank Wait. you, Matt. And uh, we're meeting tomorrow. I'm off for a two hour dentist appointment. Oh no. Oh my God. Right now? Ooh. We're on tomorrow at 10 30, right? No. Uh, 10 30 or 15 minutes after floor ends. Okay. I'm not, you know, we're not sure how long 
will go on. We've only got Eric as a witness, so yep. hopefully he can sit at home and <laughs> rest until we're available. Yep. Uh, Thank we're taking, you. We're taking okay. up the deeds issue, and I'm sure you're all looking forward to hearing from the CN, from the St. Albans probate bar, which is on Wednesday. And Joe, may, ask, be prepared. may I ask you a question, Senator Sears? Did you hear yeah. back from um, the House at all about the um, the rape kit testing? I have not, um, but I have heard the good news is that the House Judiciary and Health Institutions committees have agreed with our amendments to S338, oh. so it'll be on its way to the governor. Oh, good. Oh, great. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, All right. no, that's then, really good. I mean, that's an important bill. Yeah. Um, that Bryn, take a deep bow on that one for all the drafting and work you did mm -hmm. on that. Um, it is true, beginning, you know, it's, it's really important of the justice reforms that we can do in terms of the criminal justice system. That's great. So good work, everybody. Yep. All right, I'm going to end now. Thank you. See you, you. See, you See you in three hours, some of you, some of you two hours.